time for Book of Experts TV. Topics you love. Experts you trust. Friction free referrals. Tried, tested, trusted. This is Book of Experts, brought to you by Salesman.me. We are back with Book of Experts.tv, and today our guest, our guest expert, is going to put me to the test because we're talking about voice. We're talking about the dynamic use of your voice for impact and influence. So joining us today all the way from Munich, Germany, welcome to Book of Experts TV, Liz Howard. Happy to have you here. We are going to be talking about all sorts of things, everything from being a keynote singer, which I had never heard of before, to being a voice whisperer, uh, TEDx talks, uh, uh, advisor to the voice, soul food seminars. We've got a lot to talk about in a short amount of time. But first of all, welcome, Liz. Happy to have you here. Hey, Tobin. <laughs> Thank you for having me. After a long time, we finally, I'm here. Kuta Kenta, I found you. <laughs> yes, yeah, we, we really, for folks that, who, you know, it took a little while for Liz and I to get connected on this call. But one of the reasons why I'm so interested in sharing her with you guys, actually, is to for you to hear, already you've heard the this this powerful voice that Linz brings to the table. What's more important for you is to understand how you can bring your voice, the inflection, the dynamic, you know, and Liz is gonna break this down for us, but the dynamic elements of your voice, because that is your gift. That's one of the things that is going to allow you to connect with your clients and make that bigger impact and have that greater influence. So Liz, I probably have a dozen questions that we're going to talk about how you do that. But before okay. we go, before we go there, why do you do that? What called you to this work? How did that happen for you? Good question. I started out as a singer. I'm a studied singer. I always knew that I was going to do something with my voice. I knew it as a child. I knew it as a little girl. You have to picture a little girl kind of chubby with pigtails in her living room with a wooden spoon as her microphone and the kids, the neighbor kids behind me singing. And from there, it just grew and grew and grew. Did I have people that tell me I couldn't do it? Yes. Did I have people that say it was impossible? Yes. Did I fall and cry down? Yes. But once I got to the point where I was doing gigs and clubs and concerts and galas, I just was on the stage one evening and I'd given all this power and I'm sweating like God knows what, which that's another story. But, <laughs> and, but I, I walked off stage and I just said to the universe, listen, I need something else because I really love the music aspect of it. I love bringing joy through music. If you do your studies today, there's Harvard studies that have come out about how music can heal depression, how music can help. Um, get you into another space, how it just, it does wonderful things for us anyway. And then I just started with two small groups of compiling my method and slowly but surely Soul Food Seminars was born because I needed something more than just the galas and the clubs. I needed to use the music to help and support other people so that they can come out of their shell. And um, that they can imagine if you go through the rest of your life and you just speak right here the whole time, the rest of your life. And you've got this huge range to tickle your clients and, and, and your coaches and your audience. But you're going to stay right here for the rest of your life because you don't trust yourself to go anywhere else. Imagine that, Tobin. <laughs> so I, th I think we see this. So we have a lot of folks in our community who... Uh, are speaking from the stage when that's available. Uh, obviously in the current environment, that's changed a little bit, but doing a lot of podcasts, doing a lot of live streaming like we are right now. Um, so th there's a lot of interest, but I'm really curious, Liz, that, that could not have been an easy jump for you to make to go from the stage into essentially the boardroom, the corporate environment. And I say this because we've seen a lot of folks that bring, they have a gift, they have an expertise that they bring to the table, 
but yes. getting into that consultant role is not always an ease. So what did that path look like for you? I was really lucky simply because one of the guys that I used to play with played Dixieland music and uh, he's a clarinetist, but he's also a professor at a university. So he invited me and actually brought me in as one of his lecturers in the university. So I had the opportunity to work with young people first, students on how they communicate and how they use their voice. And my, my lectures, the first time I, I think I had like 60, 60 students, the second time it doubled, the third time it even more. And, and then my, my lectures were packed. And by having that address to say that I lectured at a German university, talking about the business voice, speaking about the business voice, it just went kaboom on the market for me. That was the best um, opportunity that I received. However, like I said, it was from a professor who is a jazz musician and he realized how important it is because today you learn everything. You have a master's, you have your doctorate, you have everything, but you do not learn how to use your voice to communicate. So I find that for instance, when PhD folks speak like this, they hold everything back. It's like everything, the voice, everything is stuck right back here and they hold on. And that's also for me, that's a sign of being perfect, you know? And, the, and it's like they're gritting their teeth, you know? <laughs> so that's to answer your question. Yeah, it, it was a challenge, but it's, it's every door has opened at the right time. Now with my corporate people, when they hire me, they don't tell their teams what's coming. They love, love to surprise their teams. Salesforce hired me. They flew all their people in. Um, rented a, I always take a grand piano. When I first started doing it, I did it with the keyboard. It doesn't work because for some strange reason, it's, it's like men in their toys, men in their cars. <laughs> they have to walk in and there's got to be, there has to be at least a Mercedes or an Audi a -A sitting in the middle of the room. Otherwise they are not impressed. So that's the first thing I changed. I went from going, using a keyboard to a grand piano. And then when they walk in the room and they're like, what the heck is going on in here? And they see this grand piano and me like, hello, how are you doing today? <laughs> and they're just like, holy cow, what's coming? And, but my clients loved that kind of shock element with their, um, with their teams, with their employees. And they noticed that afterwards, they were happy, Tobin, they were happy. They were like kids. Do you know, your father, do you know what it's like when you tell your kids it's time to go to bed and they say, no, five more minutes. <laughs> yes, I have had that experience yeah. no, <laughs> many times. Five more minutes. I was like, you guys, our time is up. No, just five more minutes. That's it. Yeah. So it's, it's yes, it's been a challenge, but I love it. Love it. There's no doubt, Liz, that you have, you've already shown it on display with us today that <laughs> your ability to bring people out of their shell, shake them up a little bit and say, we're going to do something different here. I totally love this, you know, the, the environment that you change with the grand piano. I think that there is a resonance, both physical and energetic when people come into that new space. How are you helping? Let's, let's get into the, a little, because people are always curious when, when you're looking into a new space, how can they get better or a little bit better at using the dynamic elements of their voice? Because our coaches, our consultants, our speakers, thought leaders, authors, I mean, we have all these folks in Book of Experts, they want that impact. They want to make the greater impact. How can they inject a little bit of Liz into their world and get better at this? <laughs> okay. I, God, I love your questions. How much time do we have to play? <laughs> okay. So the first thing that I'd like to say is, I th well, two things. I never do a cold call without warming up my voice first. Never, never. It's a cold call, Tobin. It's somebody that you don't know and you have to put on your best outfit. And that means you have to put on your best outfit on your, in your voice as well. Now imagine if you have a cold call and you've got something to pitch and your voices, you're constantly, <clears throat> and you're doing that with the cold call, it makes you sound insecure. It makes you sound like you don't stand behind your product, your passion, whatever it is that you want to pitch. You're 
you're just and you're just trying to get anything, grab anything for your cold call, cold call to react. Versus if your voice is warm. I know this is going to sound crazy, but I really believe that when our voice is warm and um, the breath is there, it's there's some sort of a connection, and then it just opens the door to our creativity, where we know what to say, when to say it, and most importantly how to say it at that very moment. And then you've won. That's number one. Number two, I have a uh, method that I studied for years because there were certain, I was get, receiving yes, yes, yes to certain clients and other clients, I was getting a no. It's like, thank you, sounds interesting, but no. Then I started to do my research. And I figured out everybody has taken a test. Oh, I don't want to say everybody, but most people have gone online and taken these color tests, right? Yellow, blue, um, red. And I, there's so many names for them now. But I started researching the sound of the voice with the client that you're speaking to. So. Let me just give you an example. All right, I'm, this, I'm excited to hear this because I know you have a demonstration that you're going to share with us. Okay, but this this one I just want to give, give you an example. Say, for instance, you have somebody who's blue, right? Okay. The blues are normally from what you learned is they're perfectionists. They want you to get to the point. They need facts, figures, and numbers. So you've got to come with I don't know sixty percent when you when you work with Liz Howard, eighty percent of your of, of your employees are going to stop calling in sick. They're going to return back to work. They're going to be happy. They're going to be positive. They're going to share their ideas with you, right? And so I've got to be able to come with those facts, figures, and numbers. But if I come with this kind of voice to somebody blue and say, oh, you're going to ah, have okay. I, I'm, I'm tracking with you. So this is going to be relevant to our audience list because we, uh, Caitlin, uh, one, one of our partners, founders in Book of Experts, did a training, uh, actually two different trainings in the last month about why people buy and talked about the bank, which is very similar to the colors that you're using, that, that there are different personalities that are gonna process information differently. So what I'm hearing you say, I believe, I'm, I'm checking this with you, is that the, the inflection and the voice that you use in your conversations is also matching up to those, the way we interface with other people. It yes? has to. So when I'm speaking to somebody blue, a perfectionist, I have to make sure that my voice is somehow here, the way I'm speaking to you right now, that it's calm. And I have to, even though I wanna play with emotion, I might do it on a deeper level just to make you smile a little bit, but I'm going to keep you here and play with you more and emphasize with numbers how I play with you to make you smile mm -hmm. and ask me Got another it. question about soul food you get it yeah that, that, that makes sense and it's so important so the reason why i'm saying this is you see so many experts tell you how to pitch 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 i'll tell you this from truth and truth with love you cannot pitch the same pitch to every single person on this earth and use the same sound over and over and over again. It does not work. Find out what color your client is, and then when you pitch, then do it with the sound of your voice as well, and you will win. Yeah, amen. I, I think I think we folks are with you on this. Uh, you know, ditch the pitch. Like, really create that custom personalized communication with people a conversation essentially and and exactly. i love this angle of, of leveraging your voice as one of the tool sets it's so and, important and so and important. i'll tell you i i want to bring you'll you'll appreciate this liz so i'm going to bring this up on screen uh paul andre de vera said you're making me smile right now so he's ah. you, you're getting that reaction he's he's <laughs> loving loving the way you're bringing this so thank you yeah good good so let me just give you one, one, one other example. Let's say, for instance, you have your corporate, you're in the corporate world and you're blue. Like I said, you're a perfectionist and you want your paperwork done. You, you want everything done and you want everything perfect. But there's, there's something that's lacking and you need to grow. So you have somebody yellow on your team. 
Now, when Yellow walks in the office, Yellow's going to be like, hello, good morning. I saw this movie last night. Did you see this movie? It was so great. And the blue is just saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. Go sit down. I need to have my coffee. And Yellow is just really happy and go lucky. But Yellow is bringing this great atmosphere into your workplace. When you recognize that you have this type of person, this type of sound, they, they're playful. They like to play with you. They like to play with their voice. They like to make you smile. They like to tease you, you know? Um, but this person has so much creativity that what you do is you put a telephone right smack in the middle of the, of the desk and you record because when Yellow starts to channel her or his ideas, they'll spit them out. And then, if, but if you go back to them 10 minutes later and say, you know, Liz, I really like that idea that you were talking about with the voice. What was that again? And they'll go, what? What did I say? I don't remember. You see my point? Yeah, to totally. I think when, when we get in the zone, that that's often we are pulling that. It feels like the information is coming from somewhere else and you're not yes. always, you're not yes. processing it as it comes through. Yeah, that that's a great point. Yes. Uh, Liz, we're, we're coming up on the, you know, uh, we've got about five minutes or so. I know you've got a demo that you want to share with us. I want to hear a little bit more because you've got an example <laughs> And I know you've been, I've, I've been following your content on LinkedIn and folks, you, you should do that as well. Make sure you connect with Liz on LinkedIn so you can see some examples, but share with us a little bit of what you have for us today. Okay. This is something that I see regardless of where I am, corporate world, uh, speakers, coaches, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. And like I say, if you walk on stage, if you do a podcast, if you do Clubhouse, if you go live on LinkedIn, I, I guarantee you, I would say maybe 2% take the time to warm up their voice. And then they sound like this. Um, watch my mask. This is what we call in speaking, acting, and singing. This is called the mask. Watch how... It looks a little dead. So you've heard that sound, you've heard that voice, and that person is going to ask you, well, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? And then you wonder why you're not getting any feedback. You're not receiving it versus if you warm up your voice and you really play with your mouth, you play with your jaw, you play with your eyes, you let them pop. And I know people out there, you're thinking, well, but I'm gonna look stupid. All the times that I've been on the stage, not one person has ever said to me, God, Liz, you look really ugly when you're having fun. <laughs> Because they don't see it. Yeah? So watch this. I'm going to open my eyes and I'm going to open my mouth. Do you hear the sound? Do you hear how it's different? And I'm not shouting. I just opened my mouth. When I open my eyes. did to make the sound even more delicious if you'd like to know i guess you're gonna have to send me an email but i'll give it to you one more time example number one because i hear speakers trainers do it all the time but how about and I'll say two things quickly. I recently watched an interview with uh, Audrey Hepburn, and I don't know you guys out there, but Audrey Hepburn went to a vocal coach to sing so that she could act better with her voice, so that she could learn how to play with it. I recently saw it, it was fabulous. 
Yeah, the, this is this is really interesting. Uh, I, I love this projection of the energy through the voice, through the the face, our our um, body movement or or stance. I know there's some a lot of research around that as well. Um, as we wrap up here, uh, Liz. So first of all, uh, Paul also jumped in the comments. He said, "Look, uh, how can I connect with you? What? Let's talk about your points of connection, because folks out there want to hear more. They want to. They want to get to know you. They're trying to connect on LinkedIn. I think, think he said he tried to connect and didn't have your email to make that connection. So, what's the best way that we do that? Well, there's two things that you can do. Um, you and I are connected. So I guess if they went on your page, they would find Liz Howard Connect there. Liz Howard Soul Food Seminars. That's number one. Or just Google me. Just Google Liz. Uh, no, Soul Food Minus Seminars. Soul Food Minus Seminars slash Liz Howard. Google my business page and you will find me. You're going to read about me. And if you click up on the top on the left hand side, you can translate everything from German to English. So don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> All that stuff in German, yeah? Yes, it's. I'm, I'm always impressed with you and a bunch of other folks, friends that I have that are operating their businesses and uh, conducting business and conversing with folks on LinkedIn and, and in their work uh, in both languages, sometimes multiple languages. I, I think it's always... Uh, it just, again, we're talking about dynamics uh, today, and that's another way of bringing the conversation to a larger, wider audience of people. And um, Liz, it's been so great to have you on. And one, first to finally connect, to hear you, and then for you to give us some actual examples, like the, to, to see and hear the difference in your voice, in the presentation, and for folks to think about what they can do and how they can carry some of that uh, for you guys in the audience. I would encourage you to follow up with Liz because she's teased you a little bit. She said, there's one more thing that you, you may not know the answer to. You've got to follow up with Liz to get that. Exactly. And Tobin, you're smiling. Even your well, eyes are a little bit brighter now. Ah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Liz, it's, it's been awesome to have you on. Uh, we, we always go a little bit shorter on the podcast. It's This okay. is our short form part of the Book of Experts, but we want to introduce you, Liz Howard, and all our experts to other folks out there who may benefit from getting to know. You want to have experts in your corner. You want to have that deep bench of specialists that you can call upon. You are an expert in your space. We know that. We know the folks who are in our community. Uh, yeah. There are others that need to know about you. You don't. You no longer have to be that best kept secret. We want to help you expand that visibility. And part of that is getting to know other experts so you guys can work together in a strategic way to make the world a bigger and better place. Toba, can I just say one something for three seconds? Yes, All yeah. All my clients are non-singers. So don't think that just because I'm a singer or I'm, I'm an expert with the voice that you have to be a professional singer. It's not about that. It's just stretching what you have to make yeah. it more delicious. Yeah, okay? I think I think that was a great point to emphasize. I got that, but that that might be from our conversations that we've had, Liz. So I'm glad you emphasized for folks that yeah. this does not have to be Never. Uh, we're, we're, we're really talking about the speaking, the sales, the the influence of your yes. of your communication yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. Nicely done. Okay. Liz, this has been awesome to have you on. Thank you so much. And folks, uh, watch us for our next episode coming up soon. Book of Experts. Thank you for having me.